Let's now see an legal analyst, Shan Wu. Shan is a former federal prosecutor and now defense attorney. Uh, Shan, good to have you with us tonight. Essentially, Patton has admitted he funneled that money from a Ukrainian oligarch into Donald Trump's inaugural committee. Can Giuliani credibly say this has nothing to do with the president? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, he cannot credibly say that. And uh, it's rather unclear to me what he meant by um, Mueller's being a private prosecutor. I'm not sure what he means by that. But what this shows is that the connections to Russia uh, continue to be revealed. And of course, they've been revealed to special counsel quite some time ago. But we're only getting it in drips and drabs. And although it, it's not necessarily even circumstantial evidence, that the president was involved in some type of collusion. Certainly the atmospherics show that there is very good cause to be investigating these areas to probe exactly just how, to what extent, there was Russian collusion in terms of other people in the campaign and in terms of the Russian efforts uh, to affect the campaign and the election. Patton has agreed now to cooperate with Robert Mueller. Why would Mueller want or need his cooperation? Well, he is going to be somebody who... Um, can give them more information about the way that the Russians were trying to interact with people, the way they were to influence people. And it's interesting, when you think about the mindset of cooperators, um, when I've had clients who want to cooperate, they usually don't start out wanting to cooperate. Uh, there's a strong sense of denial of being uh, angry at being asked this many questions. And what's important with Patton's situation here is we're seeing it kind of at the tail end where we're expecting, oh, this cooperation, we're going to learn more. It's important to know that long before he reaches the plea deal, there's extensive cooperation. There's debriefings, there's proffers by his lawyer. So at this point, everything that he may have that's relevant is already known to the government. So they're already following up leads on that to see you know, where it may take them and how valuable it may be. I want to turn to another plea deal, George Papadopoulos. We now know what he told investigators. According to court documents that were filed just last night, here's what Papadopoulos says happened after he pitched setting up a meeting between then-candidate Trump and Vladimir Putin. And I quote here, he says, Well, some in the room rebuffed George's offer. This is what his defense attorney writes. Mr. Trump nodded with approval and deferred to Mr. Sessions, who appeared to like the idea and stated that the campaign should look into it. Shan, is this a problem now for Attorney General Jeff Sessions because he had previously said under oath that he pushed back on this idea? It certainly seems to be a potentially big problem for him. Uh, I, I have to say that it certainly strikes us now uh, that uh, it's preposterous that Trump thinks Sessions should not <laughs> have recused himself from the investigation. I mean, clearly he's an important witness, and now there's a credibility problem with him. He might have to lawyer up. Yeah, he might be able to say that his recollection was fuzzy. I mean, his original testimony, he was trying to be a little bit ambiguous about things as well. But this certainly raises a question as to whether he himself was being truthful and uh, whether he might end up being a target of a false statements allegation. The president's already been attacking Sessions, and then he told Bloomberg that Sessions' job is at least safe until the midterms. But this contradiction now, uh, based on the filing by Papadopoulos' team, could give President Trump more ammo, I suppose, in his desire to get rid of Sessions. I think it does give him more ammo. He could now claim that perhaps Sessions is a liar, that Sessions wasn't telling the truth. Um, he certainly is not going to want to agree with this characterization that anyone on his team was anxious for this meeting, uh, much less that he was anxious for it. And frankly, you know, of course, Trump has not testified, so he right now doesn't face any type of false statements situation. But Sessions has, and uh, that's clearly a contradictory version of uh, the way that Sessions has been trying to portray things. So I, I think that is quite problematic for him. Let me ask you about Don McGahn, White House counsel, now we're told is exiting. Uh, of course, this comes after his 30-hour or so meetings with the special counsel, uh, which the president has tweeted had nothing to do with him now leaving the White House. What's your take on his exit? Uh, his exit, certainly he has not been very happy there. Uh, it seems like he's been rather ostracized and sort of exiled to Siberia in, in the White House. The damage he may have done in terms of revealing things is really enormous because in some ways it's actually worse than having Trump himself sit down with Mueller is having the White House counsel sit with him because he has raw, unfiltered access to what the president was thinking. 
uh, the president would have been talking to him, musing out loud, asking his advice where the things were right or wrong. So his type of testimony is really, really damaging. And 30 hours is just an enormous amount of time. And it's really unclear uh, whether people were just asleep at the switch having him walk in to do that. I mean, if you were my client, I would have spent double that time just preparing him <laughs> to go in for that. And, uh, it, you know, it's just unclear if they even knew that he was going in there. You kind of think of a kid saying, oh, I'm going to do some work after school. And instead he sneaks off, sneaks off with, you know, Robert Mueller for a cigarette. And the parents, meaning Giuliani <laughs> and company, didn't even know what he was up to. I mean, I think the idea now that they can claim they are certain he did no damage uh, is just preposterous. They have no idea what he actually said, and he leaves the White House really in the dark as to what was conveyed during his 30 hours worth of interviews. Shan Wu, good to have you with us. Thanks so much for taking the time. Good to see you. Thanks.